Hello everybody, this is Squeevy here with another YouTube video, and in this video I'm going to be going over Big O Notation. Um, Big O Notation is basically something that tells you how efficient your code is going to run, and it works by um, uh, how much computational effort the computer is taking up to do a certain task. So, suppose you were to have... or actually, how should I approach this? Uh, okay, so let's, let's look at Let's look at the different types of big O. So, um, um, so we have so big O notation is written like this. Like it has the O, it has whatever's in it, and the parentheses. So you should see this. Now it's not big O notation if you just write n squared. Uh, that is not big O notation. You have to have the O there. That's just a quadratic equation. So, this is called a quadratic big O. Now, there are different types of big O. There's constant, which is what we'll see a bit. This is like... Constant is like really simple methods. It takes no computational effort. It's very efficient, but it's very simple, and generally it's just a method that returns something. So, um... Then there's logarithmic, which actually does stuff, but it's very efficient. Um, it's elegant, it's efficient, it's amazing. There's logarithmic, there's of course quadratic, which I'll go into what each of these things do. There's factorial and other things like that, but factorial is very inefficient and you more often than not never use it because it's just not efficient, not good. Oh yes, and then there's um, linear, a combination of linear and logarithmic, which is, you know, usually like a for loop and a recursive statement. Uh, one thing I'd like to say, if you have things... So, we're gonna look at some code and we're gonna go... We're gonna go into what all this does, but the first thing we want to look at um, is... What does... Okay, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, what we're gonna look at is... Um, what the code looks like, and what each component does. So, one thing I'd like to point out, a quick disclaimer, is when we look at our code, there will be things like uh, variables. Those are not included in your big O. Those are very insignificant, thus not included. Um, there will be things like return statements. Those are not included. Anything really, if you have a logarithmic, and you see a constant big O, that is not included, it's insignificant. However, if you see a linear and a log logarithmic, that's a little more, you know, out there. So, usually if you see a for loop, um, and you see some math being done, um, it's just basic math, like it's adding things, it's splitting strings, you know. That is still, the big O is still linear. It's not gonna be like anything different because you have a whole bunch of math. So let's go to my Google Slides. Oh, um, by the way, if you're wondering, that's the music right there. I'm gonna put it in the description. Actually, I'm not. I don't know. So, big O notation. Make your code efficient. These are the code samples. So, let's look at our first code sample. Um, oh, Jesus. This is constant. Why? Because there's no for loops, there's no recursion. It's just simply returning a statement. Um, and it's saying, if something is true, otherwise do something else. Now this is constant, because it has no flops, okay? But what is the best case scenario? The best case and worst case. Now let me go into best case. Best case is what it does if it doesn't run into any flops, doesn't run into any recursion, it just compiles without any trouble. That's usually the best case. The worst case is if it actually runs into something. So if you have an if statement and a for loop and the else statement is just returning false, the best case would be if it doesn't, if it just return if, you know, if something is false, you know, if it doesn't hit that and goes into this. That's, you know, that's a whole different thing. Um, and one disclaimer, uh, I, I I did Big O at the beginning of the year in AOA, so it's been a little, it's been like a semester since I've done any Big O. I've done a lot of uh, trees and graphs, but I use Big O constantly, and I'm trying to explain it to the best of my abilities, so, you know, if, if you see something that I'm doing that is incorrect, you know, just shout it out, I guess, I don't know. Anyways, <coughs> sorry, I'm a little sick. Um, so there's a good example. This, the big O here for the best case is constant. It 
just skips this, it goes here, returns false, it's constant, nothing happens. Usually constant actually doesn't look like return false, it looks like print i plus n, you know, that's what it looks like. And you know, it doesn't run into any problems, it, it's, just, it's just fine. The worst case is linear, because you have one for loop, and you know, this isn't included in your big O, because it's just doing something. Now these are very simple, simple examples, I mean, when you see things like, um, sorts, you know, that, that's a little more complex. You'll spend more time determining the big O. Um, what I did to pass my test in AOA was I just memorized it. That's not a good idea. Uh, I failed those tests. I retook them. They're fine. Oh, wait. No, I gotta see. See, failing, same thing. But, you know, I, I made the mistake of memorizing. The same thing happens with organic reactions, you know. I, uh... I made too many mistakes with rearrangement in organic reactions. Uh, I gotta see on those tests. I have a C in the class for Orgo. It's a hard class, but I don't, I'm gonna stop talking about my grades. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. The best and worst case here is both linear, because you got a loop, for loop and a for loop. You know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is quadratic because you've got two for loops. I mean, you think about it. It runs through the first part. It loops through the first part. It loops through the second part. And it's really just the computational effort is doubling. Or not doubling, it's multiplying by itself because you've got two for loops and you're printing. Alright, this is logarithmic. The one thing that would tip you off if it's logarithmic is recursion. Recursion is always logarithmic. Now, if you had a for loop doing the recursion, it would probably be m log n. Um, it would be linear logarithmic. Uh, if we look at it, it would be this. It's m log n. So, god dang it, why did I click in GIMP? Go out of here, GIMP. No one likes you. No, I'm kidding, you're a wonderful thing. You help me do art, even though I don't do art. Alright. Oh, and for those who are wondering, I am qualified to do these tutorials. I have a B in the class. Don't worry, I actually might even have an A. I'm doing good in algorithms. It's, it's an easy class. Anyways, um, I'm sorry. Don't don't hurt me. Don't throw bricks at me. Don't throw bricks through my windows and hit my cats. That'd be sad. I'd cry. You don't want me crying, because my cries are so loud, glass shatters. I just go, Aah! no, I'm kidding. Anyways, uh, yeah, so let's big out notation. Uh, what did I miss? Nothing, I didn't miss anything. Um, actually, let's look at the second one with it. Nah. Nah. Nah, man. Nah. Alright, hey, that's all I have for this tutorial, Squids. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I... You know... Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. And, uh... Don't throw bricks through- Don't throw bricks in the right window. <laughs>